Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com. I am your GPR professor and today we're going to go over a quick video about your time window. So it's how much time right, are you going to allow your GPR to collect responses before it triggers another pulse, right? As you push your GPR along or you, you know, push it along if you're you know, handheld with a concrete scanner, how long are you going to let it run? to collect responses until it goes on to another pulse. Um, and I want to talk about specifically, right? So when you think about your time window, this is your GPR profile, right? Down this way is time. And that's in nanoseconds. If you convert time, right, then it would be in depth, right? But in order to convert time into depth, you need an accurate velocity. Um, and then up here, right, this would be kind of x, which would be distance. All right? So what I want to talk about is how long should you leave this open, right? Should you leave it open for um, 40 nanoseconds? Maybe. Uh, 80 nanoseconds? Maybe. Uh, 200 nanoseconds? Right? How long should you leave it open for? And that's obviously going to depend on how deep you think your targets are. It's also going to depend on how fast your wave is moving. What I want to address today is the problem with opening up your window um, much more than you need to. Because there are three drawbacks, right? That's three drawbacks to opening up your time window significantly more than you need to. So for example, let's say that you have a 400 megahertz antenna and you know, at 100 nanoseconds in two-way travel time, uh, it'll see you know, four to five meters okay, below the ground surface. And you say, well, you know, maybe there's something that's six, seven, or eight meters down. And I'll just go ahead and open my 400 megahertz antenna up to 200 nanoseconds just to try to see if I can see something down there. Really expand it. It's going to have three issues, right? You're going to come across three potential issues uh, with doing that, okay? And so here are the issues. So issue number one is, and this is, go from kind of the least impactful to, let's say, the most impactful, okay? So issue number one is um, hard drive space, okay? Hard drive space. This is a minor issue these days. Most units now have significantly more hard drive space than you need as long as you go back and download it. This might be a little bit of a holdover concern that I have from starting GPR over a decade ago, and we had a lot of uh, uh, um, problems with space, but it does take up more, right? So the, wide, the longer right, your, your time window is, okay, the longer your time window is, so 200, let's say, for example, instead of 100, uh, the more hard drive space it's going to take up. Right? The longer it's collecting data, the larger your file is, you know, uh, uh, and that'll, that'll take up some hard drive space. So that's the least, least impactful these days. Number two, okay, second reason you don't want to expand your, you know, and I see some people, that, okay, well, I'll go to 400, right? I'll go to 400, even though, you know, my maximum depth is probably going to be about 100 just in case, right? Let me see how deep I can see. Problem with it. So uh, problem number two is... Data collection speed, okay? Data collection speed. That's your second issue. The wider you open your time window, the slower you have to move as you're pushing your GPR forward, okay? The wide, right? The longer your time window, the slower you can move. Okay, the longer your time window, the slower you can move, right? Why is that? Because you can't move faster than the 400 nanoseconds it's going to take for the two-way travel time, okay? So for and and you know per your odometer clicking every single time. So every time your odometer clicks, it's got to give it the 400 nanoseconds in two-way travel time, you know, or in, you know open as a window to collect any responses that are coming from wherever they're coming from. So the wider you open it up, the slower you have to move, right? And a lot of times what will happen is your uh, instrument, your GPR, will beep at you if you're going too fast. And it means you have to slow down. So this can be pretty significant. Again, if you're in a situation where you're limited on time, 
you know, limited on budget uh, and you have a, you know, a, a, just a certain amount of time that you can go and collect your data, um, the, the slower you collect it, right, the less you're going to get done. And, uh, and that can be a real issue for a project. Okay, so data collection speeds will be constrained by how long you open your time window. All right, issue number three. Okay, issue number three. And I think this is the most significant because let's say you have the time and you have the hard drive space. Right? There is another issue that will impact you, period, no matter what, and that will be resolution, okay? Resolution. As your time window goes, right, is longer, your resolution for your entire trace is going to be worse, okay? Your resolution will be worse, and here's why, okay? Here's why. Um, let's say that you input into your system that you want you know, 512 samples per scan, okay? 512 samples per scan. A scan is a, like a trace, you know, these terms are interchangeable, um, but scan, 512 samples per scan. That's how many points will be digitized in each of your scans, right? Or each of your traces. Now, if you have 100 nanoseconds of data, or you have 400 nanoseconds of data, but you still have 512 points digitized on there, what's gonna happen? Well, it's gonna spread out those 512 points. It's gonna spread out the points, which means you're not gonna get nearly as smooth of a trace, and it's not nearly gonna be as accurate as you'd like. So you're saying to yourself, right, or you're saying to me now, hey Dan, why can't I just up the points? Well, you can. So let's say instead of 512, you go to uh, 1,024, right? These are pretty common. Wait, 1,024. So now, shouldn't you have more and a greater density? Yes. However, in order to get 1,024 or even, right, 2,048, okay, so 512, right? These are all typical. Right, so 2,048, what becomes your problem then, right? As you go, as you, as you go with more points, data collection speed is going to suffer. Okay, because the density of your points, the ability for your machine to take those points and digitize them means it's going to have a slower process. So if you go up in density, data collection speeds go down, right? And so for the same amount of, of points, right, you can still go to 2048 even with, you know, 100 nanoseconds, right, versus 400 nanoseconds, you can still upgrade the points for greater density. I'm not, you know, every, every, every situation is gonna be uh, uh, unique, but um, resolution will suffer because the amount of points you have for four times the amount of time is going to make it, you know, uh, uh, not nearly as robust of a trace or a scan for each of your scans. And so resolution is going to suffer. So three reasons why you shouldn't just go all out and say, I'm gonna go look at 400 nanoseconds deep, even though my targets appear to be coming up at 80 nanoseconds in two-way travel time or less, I'm just going all in, right? I'm going to go 400 nanoseconds. Uh, you're going to have potentially run into three problems. One, hard drive space. Two, data collection speeds, right? You'll slow down. And three will be resolution, okay? As you increase your time window, your resolution will decrease. As you increase your time window, your resolution will decrease, all right, um, so what might this look like then, right, as far as resolution is concerned? All right, so here's your trace. All right, here's your, all right, so let's say that's a trace. This is your, uh, um, your ground reflection, maybe it's the reflection of a target, okay. All right, so what are we looking at here then? When you digitize it and you get your samples per scan, right, you want more samples per scan, right, so it continues to have this shape. The problem is if you spread it out and let's say, right, let's say that this is 100 nanoseconds, but this, is uh, 400, right? 
nanoseconds, but you have the same amount of points. Right, same amount of points, but spread out much further. And what's the result? Right, what's the result in this case? The result here would be something that looked more like this. Okay, significantly worse, right? That's worse resolution. And so that is your potential problem. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. So what, what should you be, right? So what should your time window look like? It should be whatever your depth of expected targets are, right? Uh, um, and then you should understand the velocity and versus two-way travel time to get the depth of your expected targets plus maybe 20 or 30 percent deeper, right? Just in case kind of you're off on your velocities, just in case they're deeper than you expected. So 20 to 30 percent greater than what your deepest expected target is, all right? You don't necessarily have to image the middle of the earth. So I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, go ahead and share it around. Pop over to learngpr.com, put your name and email address in, and we will send you these videos every single week. I appreciate your attention, and I wish you the most success on all of your GPR surveys. Thank you so much. Talk soon.